well hello friends a uh, very good evening i'm sorry for the technical issue in the beginning my camera was not properly well, fitted friends. in uh so today is the next session for the essential short topics in pediatrics and yesterday we had done CV, uh, ccf and um, rheumatic fever so that was a pretty good discussion to begin with as far as miscellaneous topics in cardiology is concerned so today we are going to do infective endocarditis and some very interesting x-rays because many a times i got this feedback from the students that they want all the x-rays grouped up together and that's the reason why uh, you know it's worth the revision if some of you have already seen already attended my cardiology lectures for them this will be a revision for those uh, who are new you will understand that how we need to prepare because a comparative study or you know a systematic study is very important uh, so let's begin with if you are taking a uh, planning to take up the plus subscription you can use my youtube code my youtube code is right over here i guess because of my uh, video you are not able to see the image so it is uh, dr priya underscore uh, sorry youtube code is dr priyashri dash yt it is as simple as that okay just my name dash yt okay so that will help you to avail 10 percent discount so let's beginning with the topic currently okay so uh, hello Samina uh, good to see you so about the infective endocarditis okay so uh, again see in the infective endocarditis per se is a long topic but not everything is important especially not all the sentences or all the statements from that topic cannot be picked up for MCQs something which is very important has been highlighted over here uh, so let's begin up so infective endocarditis it is the infection of the endothelial lining of the heart okay so as the name suggests endocarditis endo so endothelial lining of the heart that makes it simple point number one point number two is it can infection can occur over the endocardium of the walls that is the walls or the mural endo, endocardium as well or the vascular endothelium so it can happen at all these three levels right but remember this remains the same so it's an endocardium endothelium and again endocardium okay so walls mural endocardium and vascular endothelium right now the commonest site of infection is generally a diseased wall so commonest is vsd like a diseased wall it means either there is some chd with the in that valve or a chd in that patient or the patient had got some prosthetic uh, valve uh, valve uh, replacement uh, hello dr harshita welcome we just started so you have not missed anything so uh, a diseased uh, heart or a diseased wall like a RHD, rheumatic heart diseases. So in such scenario, it is far more common to have infective endocarditis. So congenital heart diseases, I just said, VSD is far more common. We will come across this point later on. The next important point is the staph aureus is the most common causative agent. Okay, There is no second this thing. Staph aureus is the most commonly asked MCQ Okay, as far as the causative agent is concerned right and the second but now see staph aureus where it is common when there is a naive valve a, a valve which has not been previously infected or by a intravenous drug abusers in that scenario staph uh, aureus but but in case of a prosthetic valve so that's a very peculiar a different statement okay Okay, so I just wanted to change the color, but I don't think that's possible. So, in case of a prosthetic valve, the causative agent becomes coagulase negative staph. Okay, so just write it down in your notes because this is important. That when there is a native valve or uh, intravenous drug abuser, staph aureus is a causative agent. 
when there is a prosthetic valve infection is involved then it is mostly because of coagulous negative staph okay or the staph epidermidis a very commonly asked mcqs rather you will come across this when we are discussing the mcq coming to the next important portion that is the risk factors okay so this is very important just start writing it down by the time i finish it up you will already be done writing it because it's a very important table endocarditis is most commonly in previously damaged walls or in chds now coming to the high risk i already told you that vsd is a far more common condition where there can be infective endocarditis the commonest of all second is i told you ki when there is a rheumatic heart disease in such condition there can be uh, a rheumatic valvular heart disease there can be infective endocarditis and yesterday we saw that the commonest is mitral regurgitation right valvular heart diseases uh, due to rheumatic fever so this mr comes second in the list okay mitral regurgitation then prosthetic valves we saw staph epidermidis as the commonest agent tof pda coarctation of aorta as and ar okay now coming to the moderate risk lesions so when we talking about moderate these becomes the stenosed lesions stenosis okay so most commonly tricuspid stenosis okay then we have the pulmonic stenosis and the mitral stenosis see with uh, one or two revisions i believe you will be able to pick up and remember all these uh, important points okay like in high risk we saw vsd and mr and prosthetic valve disease of course there is always tof pda coarctation of aorta as and ar to the list but more commonly asked questions are from these three okay and coming to the moderate risk lesions we have the stenotic le uh, lesions which can uh, which are at moderate risk and now which are these stenotic lesions that is tricuspid pulmonic and mitral stenosis right yaad ho gaya and third is uh, and the last is the tricuspid regurgitation okay we cannot miss out this also so just remember it one thing infective and endocarditis generally we don't see in asd so with asd we have two things now remember them by heart that is they do not land up with ccf okay and the second thing is they never have infective endocarditis okay right now come to this beautiful slide it is actually my favorite slide i really like this uh because this reminds me of my ug days when you know uh, we used to have um, uh, such uh, references for uh, from different books i used to just take us a rocks because those days we didn't have la laptops with us so we used to take the rocks and stick it up to our notes so this actually reminds me of uh, that those days because i had a similar picture with me so this is actually uh, we have distributed the manifestations into three halves this is first systemic manifestation okay the second is intravascular lesions as you see over here right these are all the pictures are actually the intravascular lesions mostly because they are the due to the transmission of the microemboli okay and the last is the immunological reaction okay now coming to the systemic manifestation there is just like any other systemic manifestations like there will be the there will be fever with chills with rigors there will be night sweats more like the b symptoms anorexia fatigue and weakness very simple nothing to remember specifically over here now coming to the intravascular manifestations to remember this i would advise you to see the pictures now i think uh, you, in spite of me being there in the uh, uh, screen uh, you can very well see the different images right you can see the janve lesions you can see the sphincter hemorrhages which is the last one so this is the sphincter hemorrhage okay right okay uh, these are the rod spots the small petechial spots okay these are mostly because of the small petechies microembolies you can see 
something uh, here on the finger the thumb so these are the osler's nodes okay these are the janve lesions right and last is the sphincter hemorrhage right got it all of you okay now coming to the immunological reaction we have glomerulonephritis because of the organism per se right the arthritis and finger clubbing okay finger clubbing can be due to the ongoing chronic hypoxias leading to the clubbing of the fingers okay this one this slide is very clear for, with all of you right now this interesting flash card this is a duke's criteria for infective endocarditis okay this is too flashy actually but uh, you know such flashes only help us to remember so coming to the major criteria major criteria is very simple first is a blood culture so two positive blood cultures taken from two different locations and of course all the precautions to be taken at the time of the blood culture right okay now next is positive echocardiogram if the 2d echo is showing presence of infective endocarditis there is a new valvular regurgitation evidences of uh, new valvular regurgitation that again shows comes under the major criteria so two important things that is the culture so i'll just write here in short that major is two thing that is culture now you know the details of the culture and the second is the 2d echo right okay now let's come to the minor criteria so when there is a predisposing heart condition or injection drug use or fever or a vascular phenomena or immunological phenomena okay so these are the immunological phenomena right plus microbiological evidence like positive blood culture but not meeting the major criteria okay so in that scenario we can consider them as a minor criteria okay and last is the uh, when do we consider so it's just like uh, the jones criteria here also we had either there should be a two major criteria or there can be one major with three minor criteria or there has if no major criteria is present then there has to be a five minor criteria okay clear so again uh, these things you have to remember because you don't know you might get stuck up over here during the mcq they might ask you the these uh, combinations okay so the correct statement is um, uh, like that so what is the correct statement whether it's two major criteria or two major and one minor or one major and three minor or five minors or only four minors are enough so this way they can use the permutations and combinations and uh, i believe after this you will not forget because this is a very flashy flash card and i really like such flash cards okay now let's solve some mcq so that's all about infective endocarditis that much of uh, 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 information is more than enough okay nobody will ask you any high five questions related to this but of course uh, yes now you know what is the treatment for staph for yes they can ask you related to the treatment part and uh, the criteria is far more important recognizing the images is very important you should be capable of answering the clinical based question i mean you should be able to realize that this is actually they are talking about infective endocarditis they are talking about a heart disease they are talking about a regurgitation and fever and clubbing so clubbing is one major component that they will always mention when they are putting a clinical based question related to infective endocarditis so you should realize that they are asking about it and be able to answer it fantastic so most of you have already come with the correct answer it is staph aureus wonderful okay now let's solve this infective endocarditis least common in severe mr severe ar small vsd small asd infective endocarditis least common in so now we are done with the previous question so the who are left out they may try to attempt this question fantastic yes yes very good so samana harshita and uh, krishna has given the correct answer what about others so i'll just tell you the answer it's asd we have already seen them in literature very good arun 
okay right so that's all now let's come to the next interesting topic that is interpreting the x-rays in cvs see we are talking about the short topic so don't expect that there will be long list of mcqs because not many mcqs have been asked from this but uh, they have been asked in some important exams like aims all india you cannot afford to miss these questions and you should know how much to prepare because if you want you can sit for three hours and prepare the topic if you want this entire topic can be done in 10 minutes right so now, we, now you all are capable of completing this topic in 10 minutes no further wasting of time right so this is like interpretation of the x-rays in the cvs okay for all of you i have uploaded the pdf in uh, an academy platform because it's easier it was easier over there i didn't have to convert anything so uh, you can just uh, uh, search my name on an academy there you search for the topic uh, miscellaneous topics in cardiology okay so there i've already picked up this topic and uh, the entire pdf is present over there okay and in addition to that if you need any explanation it is also available the video entire video is available so you can just download the pdf from there well i'll try to uh, convert this and uh, uh, give give it to you all okay so this is the interpretation of the x-rays i will not go into the details of this uh, in the pdf you'll be able to see that i've given all the markings over here okay it's a very standard x-ray a uh, teaching x-ray that has been used the, since ages okay it's, in fact it's a very old uh, teaching x-ray so those who will be doing uh, uh, radiology later on post graduation in radiology you will be coming across this x-ray very often okay so directly coming to the most important portion rather than spending time on the previous x-ray because we are doing cardiology so let us see how the heart is placed uh, the placement of the different ventricles or the, uh, the ventricles and the atria different chambers of the heart on x-ray so you can see the right border the entire right border is the right atrium okay so uh, i remember in a viva question when i was uh, doing a table viva with my uh, students in one of the prelims exam i asked uh, that you can you tell me the surface marking on that x-ray the cardiology surface marking interestingly that student said this is right atrium this is right ventricle this is left atrium and this is left ventricle no dear it is not as simple as is it is in fact the heart is little bit twisted to the front so the entire right side is taken up by the right atrium in fact the right ventricle is placed on the anterior side of the heart which you can analyze when you are taking a lateral x-ray right uh, you always see a knob like this so this is the aortic arch the, the there is a pulmonary trunk then the upper portion here of course is the left atrium and the lower portion here is the left ventricle but that is the left atrial appendage okay and this is the left ventricle over here okay and finally this portion is the cardiac apex so it is so simple you know just a basic thing but so simple now coming to the differentiation between the anterior posterior view and the posterior anterior view remember that mostly you will be given the posterior anterior view okay so you can just see the difference in the uh, exposure here you can see the clavicle more prominent than the upper ribs right you can compare it from this too here you can see the clavicle but see you can see this also the ribs okay but here i'm not able to see anything like that and plus the shape shape is also looking so different over here right whereas you have a better exposure to the parenchyma of the lungs see here we are getting this much this big image of the lungs over here so definitely posterior anterior view are far more better because the exposure is better right and our interpretation we don't tend to miss out the patches if at all present in the upper lobes right so this is the uh, both of all of you got the difference between the anterior posterior view and the posterior anterior view well don't be really worried about it or really be obsessed about it 
because mostly they will be asking you for uh, recognizing the x-rays the diagnosis on the x-rays and 99.99 percent of the times they will actually yes that is true the clavicle is actually covering up the lung apex that is correct tejendra okay and 99.99 percent of the time they'll be giving you the posterior anterior view okay so nothing to worry about it okay now the next important concept when we are talking about x-rays in cardiology is what is a cardiomegaly okay a very important concept you should know not only as a doctor because uh, once your pg starts uh, you will have to actually interpret all the x-rays in terms of cardiomegaly so you can see in this image you mark the center this is this actually we have to do in our wards huh? this is a actual thing that we do in the ward we mark the center that is mostly the center of the spine okay that divides both the sides of the lungs into two equal halves then we document the highest dimension so taking this center see the highest dimension over here is this can you make out this a right this is higher dimension on this side and on this side the highest dimension can i believe you won't be able to see the b unless i shift myself so i've shifted myself so see this this is the highest dimension can you make out the b on the left side so a plus b you get a measurement so this is a plus b will be the numerator for you and at the level of the diaphragm where the uh, the length is max okay that point you will take as a denominator so a plus b divided by c that gives you the ct ratio is that clear all of you could make out yes very good so that point 6 dimension uh, tejendra that you have given holds true for neonatology whereas in uh, older children and in pediatric age group it is 0.55 ratio okay then that will be a cardiomegaly i hope this is very clear all of you will be able to um, calculate a ct ratio okay now coming to plethora plethora means wet lungs okay too much of blood uh, too much of blood supplied go blood going into the lungs so that is plethora so you can see you will see more um, uh, uh, prominent markings in the parenchyma of the lungs see this it is just looking like you know uh, too much of prominence of markings right now coming to oligemia oligemia means dry lungs with less because of pulmonary stenosis or less blood going into the pulmonary artery less blood is reaching the lungs so it's more like a dried out lung less of you will not see as many uh, vascular markings over here so can you make out it's almost a dry lung you can see the cardiac shape image very prominent you cannot see the peri perihilar pulmonary vascular markings very uh, few you can see and the rest of the lungs are looking very dry as if there is nothing inside only air right so this is oligemic lung field remember in oligemic lung field uh, the heart will actually come out as a very sharp image whereas in uh, plethoric you can see it's all hazy right the, including the parenchyma yes that's correct tejendra okay now coming to the pruning so pruning is something that we generally see in the eisenmenger syndrome okay uh, what happens over here there's a high pressure okay and uh, so what is happening in the asenmenger syndrome there is a reversal of the shunt okay so this is becoming a right to left shunt so what is happening so the shunting the high pressure left to right shunts are associated with obliterative changes in the uh, smaller pulmonary arteries and the arterioles so what happens the large or the main central pulmonary arteries they taper down rapidly to form smaller vessels this is a compensatory change okay and uh, uh, see this see here right there's a narrowing down down of the vessels i will not do the markings initially for see the image properly and then i will mark it so this is called as pruning see here the pulmonary artery it has narrowed down and you can see small uh, small vessels coming out of it 
so this is actually called as pruning you should just know the concept because you don't know which concept can be picked up and asked as mcq right we none of us are setting the papers so who is setting the paper we don't know what is his demand what is his knowledge what to what topic he gives importance that we are not aware so we should be prepared with all the basics at least and of course rest your hard work is definitely going to pay okay so now let's come to asd so we know asds and vsds generally we get pulmonary plethoras right so in asd you will generally see in asd typically what is happening the left atrium is spared so nothing is happening to the left atrium there is no atrium megaly left sided but there is a right atrium enlargement the right ventricular enlargement right why this is happening because it's a left to right trend so what is happening whatever blood is coming into the left atrium from the pulmonary veins it is directly going on without putting much pressure on the left atrium through asd it is directly going on to the right side of the right atrium right um now what is happening this poor right atrium is receiving blood whole blood from the left atrium uh, almost all the blood right next um, uh, actually two third of the blood it is receiving from the left atrium the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava are also filling up the right atrium so this much of pressure the right atrium is not able to handle so there will be a hypertrophy there will be enlargement now this excess of blood is going into the right ventricle so again there will be a compensatory right ventricular enlargement right so now this is clear okay and now this much of blood is going through the pulmonary vessel, uh, vein pulmonary artery sorry okay so again there will be a pulmonary plethora okay in so that will lead to increased pulmonary vascular markings and the plethoric lung fields clear so these are the x ray findings over here you won't find a very prominent x ray no classical x rays actually classical x rays are typically seen in the synotic heart diseases rather than the asynotic heart diseases for asynotic they will not ask you to pick up the x ray and uh, um, say because it is very difficult that way they don't have such peculiarities uh they will mostly frame it as clinical based question they will mostly ask questions on the hemodynamics right which atrium is enlarged or which atrium is not enlarged okay um uh, uh, the murmurs which are audible or what what is the abnormality of the second heart sound so this type right so we get a white fixed fix split in a uh, asd second heart sound okay now again vsd so we know that there is a plethora because uh, because of the left to right hand again the left uh, ventricle is emptying into the right ventricle and that much of blood is going to the pulmonary artery so there will be a pulmonary plethora there will be mid pulmonary artery dilatation okay there will be right pulmonary artery dilatation so that is how but not very classical again not very important from mcq point of view just for your information okay now next mcq comes begins from here pda what generally would you find in pda so generally here you can see this is of academic importance that you will there will be a linear or rail road track calcification at the side of ductus which can be seen in adults with pda okay because in pediatrics we generally don't see this but just to uh, make it up to you uh, this can be seen a calcification can be seen in adults okay nothing again unusual over here now let's come to the skimeter sign what is a skimeter this chuda this olden days they used to fight they used to have these type of chudas okay so that is the skimeter sign which is a typical uh, finding of the papvc partial anomalous pulmonary venous written not in total anomalous ha huh? total anomalous the presentation is different okay and this is mostly produced by the you can see the abnormal pulmonary veins right that drains any or all the lobes of the right lung so these are the pulmonary veins they just um, demarcate like a skimeter and that is the reason why it is called as skimeter sign right now comes here the different shapes of the heart okay so you have this boot shape heart in the tetralogy of fallow right can all of you make out i'll show you the different boot shape heart which i have come across in my clinical practice so that you don't uh, miss out itna classical presentation nahi bhi reh sakta i'll show you the other varieties what i've seen okay then a uh, string sign um uh, tejendra uh, this is not the uh, sign of eight 
I'll show you the sign of eight, and sign of eight is not seen over here in tetralogy of fallow. Okay. Kimita means a chuda, a talwar, jaisa rehta hai. Okay, which uh, uh, see you might have seen Hercules and you might have seen uh, all those olden days uh, movies. Okay, so they used to have these things, Ali Baba, Charles Chor, and all those movies. They have these scimitars in this hand. They are like the sword, the olden day swords, right? So these pulmonary veins are just falling down as if they are the swords. They have this typical uh, narrow base, and the end is quite thick. Okay, it looks somewhat like this, and then there is the handle to hold it. Okay, so that's the meaning of scimitar. I myself was a very I used to fantasize all those movies like Ali Baba, Charles Chor, Sindhabad Jahazi, and blah blah. So it's like for me, I find all these things very interesting. I don't know about you, and of course the generation has changed. So uh, did you get it, Ravi? The meaning of scimitar. Okay, so this is the boot shape heart. That's the egg on string appearance, which generally you see in transposition of great arteries. Yeah, uh, these are picked up as MCQs directly. So never ever get mixed up with the um, with the shape of the heart that you see for the different conditions. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the boot. This is the second image of a boot-shaped heart. So you can just see there's a gross left ventricular dilatation, hypertrophy. So this is left ventricular hypertrophy, right? That's giving a typical boot-shaped heart. Then this is the second boot-shaped heart. The other name for the boot-shaped heart is a coron sabo, which you can see in top. Okay. Then I have this uh, egg on end appearance. So you see. Even the right atrium has become so prominent over here. You can actually see this right atrium on the right side. Uh, Staffy, uh, I might not be able to uh, explain the whole thing because then that will take a long time. It is just a half an hour session where I can just brief you about the essentials. Well, I have taken all these things in details in the Unacademy platform. Uh, if you want, I can take a special session on the cyanotic heart diseases that holds good for me um, okay fine now coming to the tga this is the egg on end appearance okay so that's the egg so this is the typical egg on end appearance okay now this is TAPVC, Tejendra, okay, the figure of 8, uh, Ravi, this is pediatrics, but this is uh, all the serious x-rays of uh, pediatrics, because this way nobody, you are not able to get it in any of the textbook it's very difficult to have all the x-rays together and most often most common mcq from pediatric cardiology is the x-ray manifestation of different cyanotic heart diseases okay so remember this so um uh, so do not differentiate any subject all the 19 topics are subjects are important and you don't know which fits where okay so if not discussed anywhere else it will be discussed over here so that way okay so this is the figure of 8 in TAPVC okay interesting about the coarctation of aorta so you can see there is a 3 sign over here the coarct okay so that's the coarct the blue arrow is the coarct and the 3 sign okay now what are these arrows showing over here if you see a closer look come to this second image second x-ray there is a notching you can see now what is this notching because of I've written notching of the ribs now what is this notching because of can you tell me can anybody of you tell me what is uh, the notching because of yes 
the notching is mostly because of the collaterals the collaterals that is developed in a case of coarctation of aorta and these collaterals uh, collaterals when they are passing through the uh, just uh, yes very good rhea so they are actually causing notching because they are since uh, way before like during the fetal life the co the collaterals develop so developmentally that develops a natural notching of the ribs okay so that's because of the collaterals okay now here you have truncus arteriosus okay so in truncus arteriosus uh, another mcq what you see generally here is a waterfall sign what happens here is a right pulmonary artery has a superior origin okay plus just for your academic importance yes so which is the condition that generally develops uh, antenatally if you can tell me that then you will get the answer yourself which is the condition that develops antenatally coarctation of aorta preductal so the one that is uh, antenatally uh, that presence antenatally they tend to develop the collaterals so in pre preductal you will tend to see the collaterals post ductal mostly which you discover later on in the adulthood they will not yes very good tejendra okay so now you see uh, it's like uh, quite understandable generally the one that uh, presence later the post ductal ones doesn't have collaterals developed okay so you will less likely see them uh, see the notching so in preductal you will see the notching of the ribs okay is that clear ravi staffy all of you right the second important is the hyler comma sign okay so this is only of theoretical relevance they can ask you in the mcq form Epstein's anomaly. What is Epstein's anomaly? First of all, the most important thing that you need to remember here is it is with because of lithium toxicity or lithium poisoning, right? The second thing over here is there is a what is always remember this atrialization of ventricle okay very good stuffy so this is a box shaped heart that generally you see in Epstein's anomaly okay see he, uh, if you want me to discuss the hemodynamics then you wait for uh, wait for three four days I will take a special session on all the hemodynamics of Synotic heart diseases that will make things easier for all of you okay so the, just wait for because here i cannot discuss hemodynamics of all the topics what do you want to know ravi what about the cardiac still out what do you want to see it is mostly basically it is mostly because of the enlargement of the right atrium enlargement of the left atrium and the left ventricle which is causing this typical uh, yes the lecture is done Hashita. i'm getting some queries over here i'm trying to solve them okay so ravi said cardiac still out increase in epstein's anomaly yes it is the right Ventri atrium in fact the right uh, ventricle right uh, left ventricle uh, which prominence of these ventricles which is giving a typical box shaped heart and uh, yes Rhea I'll take I'll definitely take the hemodynamics class uh, Shiva I'll not talk about the tricuspid valve today because it will take time okay and uh, not only that it will confuse because I think some of you all are confused okay uh, just what my uh, motive was today that 
uh, see mostly these are the one liner mcqs see we are trying to prepare you for the mcqs uh, because now all the exams like we have this neat pg we have aims we have pgi so uh, if you understand the uh, uh, what questions they can ask you some one liners are direct answers you cannot afford to get them wrong and apparently my experience has shown me i know stuffy it is a very confused wala topic and believe me when i teach uh, cardiology in uh, an academy plus platform it takes me 5 hours to complete the topic and then only the students actually get a, a very good uh, hold on that topic hi re ravi what is steel plant sign okay <laughs> see uh, I am not a radiologist. These are the typical MCQs. Uh, and I have not actually come across this name because I am not a radiologist on the first this thing. So, I am really not sure about the steel plant sign what you are asking about. Uh, where did you read it? Yes Ravi, where did you read the steel plant sign? Because uh, to the best of my knowledge, even my textbooks, even Nelson has not mentioned steel plant sign anywhere. And my last 14 years I have not, uh, I don't remember listening to this uh, steel plant sign in any of the text, okay, as far as pediatric is concerned. So if you have, uh, if you are in touch with some radiologist, maybe you can get in touch with that person and uh, okay, okay. So that might be a sign in adult medicine, dear. Okay. So see, there is a difference between pediatric and adult medicine. We are restricted till 12 years of age and apparently, uh, so you can ask medicine, what is steel plant sign? Yeah. With whichever uh, educator you are in touch, try to ask the, him about the steel plant sign. So, that uh, he'll be the right person to explain you because in pediatrics I have not come across it. And I don't really don't want to give you wrong information and confuse you unnecessarily. Whatever is mentioned in pediatrics, it is my duty, it is my job to get it to you all, the correct information. And uh, so if you just revise, this is a very basic and huh? this is only skeleton. This is not the all thing, all factor, complete high yield factor because of course in YouTube and that too in high yield uh, uh, topic and in half an hour, I cannot cover up the entire thing. It is practically impossible. I try to go over time, but you know, it is not possible for me, right? So what you can do is uh, uh, I have certain sessions in cardiology okay in uh, pediatrics which is very interesting I have got a very positive feedback after those lectures they have told me that you have made pediatric cardiology so simple again there is a lot, lot of difference between pediatric cardiology and adult cardiology because we are mostly dealing with the congenital heart diseases more commonly even this um, valvular, uh, valvular involvement I think uh, Shiva had posted the question tricuspid valve prolapse. In fact, you know what these valvular diseases also we don't see very common in pediatric. It's mostly into adult medicine. So, but anyways, we'll discuss that. I'll keep that in mind and we'll discuss that definitely. Uh, so, uh, looking forward to see you all. You all can um, uh, register or subscribe to my telegram channel. I always share it at the end of my this thing. It's t.me slash dr priyashri and if you have any difficulty if you want me to take a particular topic of course don't rely on youtube because youtube is only half an hour i cannot cover everything uh, properly in youtube i have to take a special session which is one hour or maybe on the plus platform i can take the complete session uh, so uh, you can always put up your difficulties your whatever topic you want me to take for you in special session i'll be more than happy to take that for you all okay please do that and uh, uh, register or subscribe to my telegram channel uh, in this channel i'm trying to uh, make it like you you all can also post some difficulties in that now i'm just using it to post whatever my lectures are up to uh, are uh, planned that i post in this channel so uh, looking forward to see you all
and your messages so take care i end my session over here